me if this is incredibly inappropriate, but you just have the most incredible proportions. Do you mind if I take a closer look? Thank you so much. I just like to, just like to take a look here. Want to know? Everything is arranged just like this. That is that's incredible. Absolutely wonderful. So I am gonna push my luck a little bit here, but I am looking for someone to be a medical model, essentially for anatomy purposes. And I was wondering perhaps if you might be interested in just allowing me to take some measurements for that. Is that okay? Oh, wonderful. You do not have to go through with it if you don't want completely complimentary measuring. Very good. So I'm a little old school, and I find that these somewhat rudimentary, these types of measuring tapes, often used for fabrics, that these tend to work quite well quite well indeed for measuring the human body. So I'm going to use this tool and in order to measure you, I will need to be touching you. Is that okay? Do I have your permission to do that? Wonderful. So I always keep some spare sheets on me. You never know when you might find someone with absolutely exquisite proportions out in the wild. Here we go. And we'll start right about here. Would you mind if I just grab your name? And do you prefer to go by that name? Is that how you like to be addressed? Excellent. So, let's start with the face. This is what originally drew me to you. I think that this could be We're going to start with the length here. Good. Right about there. Okay. And I'm also going to be taking these measurements in centimeters. So we have both metric and imperial systems. Right about there. Very good. And then I will just be... I'll just be recording these values on my sheet. Here we go. 
just going to lay that right about there. Is that comfortable? Okay. Definitely not trying to close the nose at all. Just want to go up and above that. Okay. So then let's flip it. So this is about how it'll be throughout the entire process. I just like to measure your head circumference. So let's go ahead and go right about here. And then we're just going to bring this around. switch to the other side. Alright, so that's a touch different. this up just a touch. And then we can do the face length as well as the neck. So for these medical models that I'm looking for, it is both for anatomy diagrams, anatomy models, they can cast molds and things like that, but it is also for, if you ever happen to see, demonstrations of different examinations on websites or on YouTube, for example. There needs to be someone who, who is the model for that. I often look for people for that as well, so do keep that in mind as you deliberate your decision. And then we can switch to Imperial and metric measurement end up being a round number. Here we go. I do adore when that happens. Forehead. 
we are going to be doing both of the length here as well as the width Wrap this up a little bit, make it a bit neater, and then we'll come across just the forehead here. Good. And then we can flip that. And then sometimes we have measurements that are not round in either either system is just fine. Now if you'd like to, you can talk about anything you wish. We don't have to just talk about my measuring process. Some people do prefer to just allow the measuring to occur. It gives them a little bit of downtime. Sometimes I find that when people come to me for this measuring, that it might be some of the only if not the only time that they can allow themselves to just take a breath. It really is quite a shame. We do what we have to and all of that. But I do get a lot of people who are very stressed, very stressed, and sometimes even burnt out, seeing quite an increase in that. And so, I do my best to make this as relaxing as I can so that you might have a bit of respite between doing the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. There we go, right there. And people often feel very guilty about this because when we're stressed, when we have so many things on our plate, overworked, underappreciated. We're not ourselves, we're not the person that we like being often. you find this bit of time a place where you do feel like 
you can have a moment to yourself. It may not be a lot, but it's certainly much more than than nothing. is my own sort of respite. To be able to give people that little bit of relaxation while I get to measure absolutely incredible, wonderful, brilliant proportions. It's living the dream, really. It truly is. So, I'm going to come right across the nose here. This one's kind of an odd one. Exactly, and where does it end? Sort of an ambiguous border there. But we have to be rather picky, 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 picky about where we end up deciding to take that measure. to do the lower face here, so that will be under the nose, under the nares, all the way to the chin here. Good. Speaking of burnout and whatnot, I've found that I'm actually having that sort of conversation with a lot of people in my life, sort of all at once, and one thing I notice is people feel so guilty about it, and for one reason or another, they feel like if they're not doing anything, that this is almost a morally wrong action, that they're lazy or a bad person if they're not always doing something, and that is rather damaging and can just continue the spiral out of control. We are... We are still animals by nature, and all things need rest as much as we may not wish it to be that way. And running ourselves dry constantly It can end up being where our bodies force us to stop 
and you can experience something it's still burnout but beyond that especially if you happen to be someone who is not neurotypical so for example those with ADHD and autism you can get skill regression which is very difficult to deal with all of a sudden these things that you've known how to do for so long and you just can't do them anymore I've had a very interesting experience with skill regression over the past year myself I've trained myself from a very young age to make a lot of eye contact and I found that all of a sudden I had I could not make eye contact with people anymore and it felt like a special pointed sort of defeat it feels damning, almost, to have something that you've poured your time and energy in anything at all, your hobbies, your, you know, some of your mannerisms, like me, with eye contact, with your work, do you all of a sudden have that pulled from you for no reason? It's very, it feels violating in a way. And I think it's very important to know that while that can happen, we can avoid it. And if it does happen, it's not permanent by any means. But we do need to be careful. I'm just going to grab some ear measurements here. It's easy for me to say that, right? It's just words. It's not necessarily actions, and there wouldn't be a global stress crisis if it was just as easy as saying, you need to relax. And I'm all aware of that. And I myself had dealt with burnout for several years, and a big part of getting out of it involved a lot of therapy, which is not very accessible. And it was a lot of throwing things at the wall and seeing what's stuck, which can be irritating at the very least. Let's do some weights here. So, I'm not going to say that I have the cure, but I did find that what happens to be Something really important is not only acknowledging it, but this sort of acceptance. And what I mean by that is it can be hard enough to realize that you're burnt out, that you can't do the things you want to do, can't do the things you need to do.
but then what are you supposed to do about it, right? What, where do you go from there? And when we come upon this realization, again, a lot of that guilt sets in. I notice with myself, if you've ever heard of the steps of grief and how people go about it, I found that with myself. And with other people, they almost go through a sort of grief. You're grieving the person you think you should be, you're grieving the person you want to be, and you're grieving the fact of the person that you've had to become to be able to get through. And that's very difficult. And until you get to that acceptance stage, it feels like nothing is going to ever work. And the more you try, the more it doesn't stick the more it just feels worse. This ear was a tenth of a centimeter off from that one. Interesting little finding there. So it's just something to kind of chew on, mentally mulling over, sort of checking in with yourself and being honest. That's something that can be quite difficult, is having that honesty because it's just another thing to add to the plate, right? What are you supposed to do about it? So, what I did besides raging about it, you know, everything sucks, it's unfair, what am I supposed to do? After getting through all of that, and that took a while, it took a while to get through. Then I started doing things to try to address that, and that was, again, difficulty in and of itself. You have to try to address survival needs the best you can, and then you try to find things that give you both a sense of peace, perhaps a sense of joy, a sense of accomplishment, Things like that. I'm going to be doing the eyes here. We're going to start with the width. So, brain chemistry and all that is a big part of pop psychology these days. I'm not really going to throw those terms at you because people don't understand them very well. They boil them down to very simplistic terms. It does help people understand a little bit more, but they're not quite correct in using simplistic terms like dopamine and serotonin, what have you. But I will say that finding things that fulfill certain emotions, certain emotional needs, we all at times need a, need a time, have a need for peace. We have a need for humor or laughter for many people. We have a need for feeling like we have a purpose 
that we're good at something and trying to explore these different things there is, there is a sort of simple joy in and of itself being able to try different things Even if we don't necessarily enjoy them, then we know. We know that we don't enjoy that. Or we know maybe we need to try that at a different time. Maybe we don't quite have the bandwidth for it at that moment. But anything worth doing is worth doing badly. You, the people that have these issues. Anything worth doing is worth half fasting. Because otherwise, it's, it's not an all or nothing situation. There is a middle. Let me know if I'm getting a little too close. This can be a bit of a vulnerable area. Oh yeah, it's just mostly something, something to think about. I mean, I don't have the right perspective by any means. I don't even necessarily have a unique perspective, but I have a perspective. And then it clicks, and then what they've been mulling over for a while, what they've been trying to figure out for themselves, makes a little bit more sense. Or just something that I want you to keep in mind. Because it's really, it's hard hearing about the people you care about struggling so much. It's hard to hear about other people who are struggling so much. And it's hard because no one has the exact answer. That's what makes it so complex. There are things that work for some people, things that work for other people. Sometimes it's taking five minutes from scrolling on your phone to do some sort of language learning for a bit, or sometimes it's finding some sort of funny podcast or video. Sometimes it's dipping into nostalgia. That's one of my particular favorite things to do is I watch a lot of game playthroughs from games of my childhood. And there is this innate sort of safety in it. I think a lot of people lack that innate sort of safety. It feels like our nervous systems are overwhelmed and everything feels like a threat. And that's not necessarily for everyone, but it is for quite a few people, unfortunately. 
So finding those things that might make you feel just a little bit more at ease. And it's all about trial and error, it's all about seeking things far and wide. unsolicited bit of advice, but it's just something I've been thinking about quite a lot lately because I've had this discussion with quite a few people lately, seeing threads and posts on it all the time. One of the best things I did for myself was get off of almost all social media. It just really didn't serve me. Some people it really helps. Some people it just keeps them in this sort of in this sort of like brain chemical casino where you just keep scrolling because there might be something that just hits right. You just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and it doesn't quite ever get satisfied. For some people, that's the only sort of interaction they get at all. Some people really finely curate their things and they get to see all sorts of things related to their hobbies or interests and then by all means, that's really how it should be. So we're going to work into the neck here. And I'm just going to take this and come underneath here, right there. About right here. Very good. So, all in all, there isn't a right answer. But even finding the wrong answers are still answers. It's still information that can be used to extrapolate, to better things to try, to narrow down things to try. And I'm going to do the width here. Then the next one I'm going to do is circumference. That one can be a little uncomfortable, especially when we're touching around this area. I'm going to be very light about it. at the imperial measurement here. do it on just the side so I don't have to keep flipping the, the tape around so that we can just do one and done here. So how is this? Is this
comfortable enough for a few moments. Very good. So. There. Very quick. Gotta keep those measurements in my head. I'll just ravel this up a little bit. shoulder to shoulder right here so outside of one shoulder outside of the other And we can flip that to the other side. Good. And then, yep. Good. Now we'll get into the chest a bit. We have our width, we have our length, and we also have circumference as well. So let's do width first. And then we'll flip this for just a moment. Then let's get into the length. good amount there. Something I've been doing lately in terms of addressing burnout and such. As of late, I've been attempting, attempting to do more baking. I actually can't have carbohydrates. Like, I have a cap of 50, which is like the equivalent of a Dr. Pepper. No, that's more than 50. I'm just gonna come around your chest here. Though, so I can't actually eat any of the things I make. But I can give them to people. So... 
for Christmas, we made a Christmas crack, which is named because of the sound it makes when you crack it, when you cut it up and you eat it. And we made different types of cookies and dipped pretzels. There's quite a few people in the family, so it all got eaten. Otherwise, I'll forget it. I'll keep trying to get to it, but I bake in sort of quarters, so it has to be seasonal. And I tend to start the season rather early. So, January's bake was supposed to be a blueberry lemon loaf with a little lemon icing on top. But we've had some goofiness with our home as of late, so essentially half the month was a throwaway. Hoping maybe next weekend. I'm gonna make all sorts of things coconut cupcakes and see, like maybe a strawberry scone. All different sorts of things. Try like a key lime pie. to find springtime sort of things. Might get rhubarb. There's plenty of rhubarb in Iowa. So I'm going to do the natural waste now. for me to take four measurements, but there certainly are more that I've had to juggle in my head. And if we flip that over, okay, and then we'll do the hip here. Tape is a sort of cheat sheet. So, yeah, lots of plans with baking. That's something being able to do all these little steps and make something. I may not be able to taste it, but I can smell it, and it makes other people very happy. You ever show up to the function with homemade goods? For the most part, Consult my tape here. I also do quite a bit of writing. Writing is my main sort of accomplishment. It's the it's the thing I do to wind down in the evening. Tape a bit. 
and I do a lot of reading, do a lot of exploring, I've tried to get much more involved in my own community to the best of my ability. Try to see all sorts of things, go to the events, because events disappear if people don't attend to them. So it's important if you think these things are cool, if you have the ability to go do them. Doing things like crocheting or drawing, all sorts of these little bits and bobs. It's just kind of trying things out a bit, seeing how they hit you. Either they do or they don't. It doesn't mean they won't ever, but sometimes in the moment you just need different things. So let's go ahead and do the We are almost about finished. Okay. Diving into history and things like that, doing research, just all these, all these little bits. That is my own sort of inoculation against burnout and taking a lot of time to try stupid things, watch stupid things, not take oneself seriously. That's a big part of it for me, for what works for me. It'll be quite easy if you could just hold out your hands for me. Let's do a couple of circumferences to finish it off. So I'm going to do the upper arm as well as the forearm. I'm just going to wrap this around and I want you to not flex here. Just let the arm be relaxed. Okay. Fairly 
similar, but sometimes you never know. Some of us really rely on one side over the other. really appreciate you allowing me to ramble on. I know that can be a bit awkward sometimes. Oh. Certainly a lot more I could say on the subject. Let you kind of think about it. It's not something, you know, I'm not trying to convince you of anything. It's just something to mull over. See if any of it is something that's useful for you, and if it's not, it was just a conversation with a stranger. If it is, then it is useful. I think for very last, I had forgotten to do the width of your hands. You don't mind just holding those out. Very good. So the upper body is more what is going to have the most relevance, and if you do happen to want to take me up on that medical anatomy model sort of deal, then we can certainly get the entire body's measurements, All right? going to just roll this up here, and I'd like to thank you so much for joining me for this measuring. I had an absolute wonderful time measuring your fantastic proportions, so thank you for that. I hope you have a of your night.